Samsung rushing into the next big update while still struggling with the last one. While millions of users are still waiting on the buggy and delay One UI 7, Samsung is already working on One UI 8. But here's the twist. This new version might not be all that new. From what we've seen so far, One UI 8 could just be One UI 7.1 with a new name. Let's break it down. Samsung usually pushes out a point update like 7.1 before jumping to a full version like 8.0, but this year, they're skipping that. Instead of One UI 7.1, they're going straight to One UI 8. And based on early builds tested on the Galaxy Z Flip 6, it looks like most of the features in One UI 8 were already coded into One UI 7. They just weren't turned on yet. One of the best examples is now brief. It's a feature that's already in the software on supported devices, but Samsung never enabled it. Now with One UI 8, it's finally becoming available, especially on newer flagships launched this year. So in a way, it feels like Samsung is just unlocking features they were already holding back. Another addition in One UI 8 is log video recording support inside the camera app. This was first introduced on the Galaxy S25 series, but now it's being made available for the Galaxy S24 series as well. But again, this is something that probably could have been added to One UI 7 if Samsung really wanted to. Now that doesn't mean everything is recycled. There are a few actual changes worth mentioning. For instance, quick share is getting a refresh. The sharing menu is now split into two tabs, send and receive. You can switch the receive tab and make your device visible temporarily, which is way better than the older options that made your device visible either all the time or for just 10 minutes. Other than that, the user interface in One UI 8 is nearly identical to One UI 7. There is a small visual change in the quick settings panel. Some buttons are now shaded, but this change wasn't consistent across all test devices, so it might actually be a bug instead of a feature. Even some of Samsung's apps are getting minor tweaks. In the gallery app, when you tap the menu button, the options are now surrounded by circles. It looks a bit nicer, but that's about it. The actual functions remain the same. Under the hood, One UI 8 is based on Android 16, so there are going to be some performance and system level changes. But many of the new features from Android 16 won't matter for Samsung users. Why? Because Samsung already offers a lot of them. For example, Android 16 adds lock screen widgets, but Samsung users already have that with One UI 7. So a lot of what's new in Android 16 might feel like old news to Galaxy phone owners. So the big question is, when is One UI 8 actually coming? Samsung is expected to launch One UI 8 on the Galaxy Z Fold 7 and Z Flip 7, which are coming soon. The update could also roll out to current Galaxy devices within the next three months. But don't get your hopes up for a beta program. There's thought that Samsung may skip that altogether. At the moment, One UI 8 is still being tested, so we could see more updates before the final version arrives. Did you hear the rumor that Samsung might put a weaker chip in the Galaxy Z Fold 7? Well, it turns out that's not happening. Samsung is going all in with the full 8-core Snapdragon 8 Elite processor, the exact same one that's powering the Galaxy S25 lineup. That's now confirmed thanks to a benchmark result that puts all the earlier doubts to rest. Let's take a quick look at where this rumor even started. There were talks online about Samsung possibly using a 7-core version of the Snapdragon 8 Elite in the Z Fold 7. The reason behind this? Foldable phones usually deal with more heat buildup because of their design, so some believe Samsung might go with a slightly toned down chip to avoid overheating. And to be fair, that idea wasn't completely wild. There is a version of the Snapdragon 8 Elite with 7 cores, specifically made for foldable phones. So when that rumor started, it made sense to some people. Using a chip that runs a little cooler could help with battery life and thermal control. But here's the problem. When you're spending almost 1,800 US dollars or more on a phone, you don't want something toned down. You want top tier performance. Anything less would feel like a downgrade. People expect the Z Fold series to deliver the best of everything and a weaker processor would definitely fall short. Thankfully, we now have proof that Samsung is not cutting corners here. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 will have the same 8-core Snapdragon 8 Elite for Galaxy version used in the Galaxy S25 series. That means high clock speeds, strong graphics, smooth multitasking, and fast performance, everything you'd expect from a premium flagship. On top of that, the phone will also come with one UI 8 pre-installed, running on Android 16. So you're not just getting top hardware, you're also getting Samsung's newest software right out of the box. The combination of fast performance and updated software will give users the full premium experience. Now, looking back at that earlier rumor, it's clear that it was never based on anything solid. There were no leaks from trusted sources and Samsung never hinted at using the 7-core chip. 
It was just the rumor mill doing what it does best, spinning stories. Still, it's understandable why people were concerned. Foldable phones are still relatively new. They often face design challenges that regular smartphones don't. Cooling is one of those problems. So when talk about a weaker chip started making the rounds, it raised a lot of questions. But Samsung has now cleared those doubts without saying a word, just by showing what's actually in the device. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 is expected to launch later this summer. Along with it, Samsung will also be introducing the Galaxy Z Flip 7 and the new Galaxy Z Flip FE, a more affordable clamshell-style foldable. It looks like Samsung is working hard to cover every price range with its upcoming foldables. So if you were worried that the Galaxy Z Fold 7 might come with something less powerful, you don't need it anymore. Samsung is sticking with its best chip, and that's exactly what people want to see in a phone that's expected to cost over $2,000 US dollars, especially if import taxes go up later this year. In short, the full-strength Snapdragon 8 Elite is confirmed for the Galaxy Z Fold 7. No downgrade, no performance gap, and no missing features, just a powerful foldable phone that delivers on all fronts. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more updates on Samsung, foldables, and all the latest tech news. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Is Samsung finally ready to bring back its own chip to power the Galaxy S series? That's the big question. And if the latest reports are right, you might be seeing Samsung's new Exynos 2600 chip inside the Galaxy S26 phones next year. After a few delays and a lot of testing, things are finally moving in the right direction. Here's the background. Samsung originally planned to use its Exynos 2500 chip, built on a three nanometer process for the Galaxy S25 series but that didn't work out. Why? Because Samsung Foundry couldn't get a good enough production yield. In simple terms, too many chips coming out of the factory weren't working properly, and that made it too expensive to continue. So Samsung decided to use the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite chip instead, and most users were actually happy with that decision. Qualcomm processors are still seen as faster and more reliable by a lot of people, but Samsung hasn't given up on making its own high-end processors. Now they're working on the Exynos 2600, which is being built using an even smaller 2 nanometer process. And this could be a game changer if it all goes according to plan. So, where do things stand right now? According to a new report from Korea's AK Radio, Samsung Foundry has managed to reach a 40% yield rate for its 2 nanometer production line. That means 4 out of every 10 chips they produce are working properly. While this number still isn't high enough for full-scale production, it's a big improvement. Usually, chip makers wait until yield rates hit at least 70 to 80% before they start mass production. But with this progress, Samsung could be on track to reach that goal before the end of 2025. If they hit the mark, the Exynos 2600 could enter mass production by November, giving Samsung enough time to include it in the Galaxy S26 series. How does this compare to the competition? Well, TSMC, the company that makes chips for Apple and others, has already reached a 60% yield rate for its own 2 nanometer chips. So Samsung still has some catching up to do, but it's not too far behind. Now, we all remember how previous Exynos chips struggled when compared to Qualcomm's. From heating issues to poor battery life and weaker performance, users had plenty of complaints. That's why Samsung is under pressure to make the Exynos 2600 a real competitor this time around. So, what can we expect? Samsung hasn't shared many details yet, but the Exynos 2600 is expected to bring better CPU and GPU performance, improved power efficiency, and cooler operation compared to older versions. Basically, Samsung wants this chip to feel just as fast and smooth as the Snapdragon without the downsides. If they succeed, the Galaxy S26 series could mark the return of the Exynos chip in flagship devices at least in some regions. That would be a big step forward for Samsung's long-term plans to reduce its dependence on other chip makers. Of course, all of this depends on how well the production process continues. There's still a lot that could change between now and the end of the year. For now, all eyes are on Samsung Foundry and whether they can push the Exynos 2600 across the finish line in time. If you're excited about what the Galaxy S26 could bring or just curious about how Samsung's new chip will perform, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you updated on all the latest news, leaks, and official announcements. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.